A water problem like this is what French Drain Man is built for. So I'll show you what we did. Water's coming off the lake. We're gonna go to the front here in a minute, but the first video is here. Water's coming off his neighbor's side, filling this way. And you can see right by that pine tree right there, how the water is would crest over that and come down here to this area. The water backfed in between the two homes. You can see how the water came in right here from the front yard. There's a ditch in the front. When the water jumped the ditch bank, it just backfed into the yard. This was dirt or grass. You can see how high this has gone. The gazebo was above the ground. This was a very small pond with a berm built around it and it has no overflow. So we're going to correct for that. We'll get to that a little later in this video. Just wanted you guys to see this when the water's all the way to the top of that berm. Now out front, here's the ditch. And here's the ditch bank. You can see how the homeowner took some topsoil bags in an attempt to hold back that water and prevent it from flooding his property. thought that was a pretty good idea, but it just wasn't enough in this case. Once this ditch swelled up, because the main river basically overflowed, so water just backfeeds when that happens. Just basically, flood water goes uphill, guys. So it climbed this ditch bank, came up over the ditch bank. The higher elevation in the front yard, it worked its way up the higher elevation, the only water that runs uphill is flood water, and that's what that looks like. I love these jobs. These are the jobs that keep things from getting boring. Most people look at it, and they're ready to sell their home. They're you know, just absolutely hitting the panic button. Usually when I see this, I tell them right away, this is no problem. There's a remedy. It's not that bad. Don't worry about it. We're going to take care of it. So the water never jumped the driveway, so that's a good benchmark. We're going to work with that number. When the water couldn't make it up over the driveway, that's fantastic. We'll go ahead and we'll shoot that elevation with our laser level. We'll use that as a benchmark, and then we'll build the ditch bank up so that the water can't crest over the ditch bank. We hauled in a lot of clay. We wanted a really solid ditch bank. You don't want to build it up with topsoil. A lot of people make that mistake, and the water's just going to erode the water is going to just push its way through that topsoil and is just going to erode the ditch bank away. So we wanted to use clay for a real solid ditch bank. And then as we dug out this giant sump pit, because we're going to have a double chambered system on this property, we repurposed all this clay to raise the elevation in between the two homes. We have a couple lines of defense here. We start with the ditch bank itself. That's our first line of defense. Eventually, if it gets bad enough, the water's going to find a way around somewhere on the neighbor's property. We wanted to make sure that we raised the elevation in between the two homes. We took our laser transit. We measured all the elevations. This is a technique we do all the time. The guys dropped the level of the pond we have an overflow now for the pond. Got a six inch. You can see the water was up over this dock. You can see how good the finish work is that the men did. It's beautiful. They cut that sod off and just laid it back. But just to show you how well that's working, look at all the water. That's moving. That's what's keeping that pond at a, the precise level that the homeowner wants that pond at. There's a clay berm that goes around the pond. And there wasn't an overflow set. We do have a stainless steel critter guard inside that tube to keep out muskrats and things like that. But this thing's been running for hours. 
depending on if that pond is spring fed or not, how long this will run. During the rainy season, it's going to run all the time. They dug through this berm, went ahead and ran that six inch culvert pipe. We have some chicken wire we put on the end to keep out small animals and so that their fish, if they're trying to grow a fishery, they're not losing fish. Beautiful work. So remember the gazebo in the beginning, it was sticking out of the water, all this land, it was engulfed in flood water. That's all drained down now. That overflow on that pond, will keep that in check. And then the elevation change in between these two properties. For that 100 year storm that we seem to get every five years, that's what that's for. This homeowner can sleep easy now after you experience something like this, a homeowner can't even sleep at night. It's just really upsetting. You feel violated. So we pulled power. We have to run the power out to our pump system. We have a big, massive dual chamber pump system. The homeowner has a septic field in the front yard, and they don't want the flood water to be on top of the septic field. It's not ideal. This is going to keep up with it. If the pumps fall behind, the chamber will hold some of the water until the rain lets up. When you have this much property, there's going to be a lot of water coming off this front yard. You have to remember when you raise the ditch bank, the water can't run down in the ditch anymore. So we changed all that. We put up the ditch bank so the water can't backfeed in the front yard. However, any water that falls in the front yard and comes off the roof and out the gutters, the downspouts, that no longer can find its way to the ditch. So we had to put this big interior chamber, if you will. You have this line of defense. You go ahead and you build this dirt dike, this dam. You need a pump system inside now. The video footage you're about to see was shot by a crew member. I had to go on appointment. I was gone for a couple of hours. So luckily, a crew member took some video so that you guys could see what this dual chambered massive pump station looked like. Again, he's holding his camera. He's holding his phone in his hand. We have no stabilization. So it was super, super windy. The stone is very dusty. There's no chips in the stone. It doesn't have any fines in it. It just has a lot of dirt, if you will. The dirt's not a problem. Not worried about that. I hate the stone chips. The stone chips are a problem. Stone chips can plug the perforations in your system, whether it's a yard drain, French drain, or if it's a massive sump system like this. The chips are terrible. So that's why I say the chips are a problem. As long as you have screened stone and you don't have crushed stone and fines, the dirt, as soon as we have a good hard rain, the dirt's going to be washed right through the system it's not a problem so don't worry about having dusty and dirty stone it's not a big deal i have to compliment my crew i have to brag on my crew these guys came in and they pulled all this off in a day yes we're very organized and everybody has a ridiculous amount of experience and combined our experience is decades and decades and decades Heck, by now, it's starting to look like centuries of experience when you combine everybody's experience. These guys nailed this job. They went in like a well-oiled machine, like the well-oiled machine that they are, and these guys, with a purpose, went ahead, and in a straight line, they didn't zigzag. They knew right where to start, systematically, how to work the job site, well-organized crew. 
That's what it takes to pull a job off like this in a day. So Francisco's working all this repurposed clay with the dozer blade. And I love using clay when I'm trying to keep out water. Never just buy from a landscape supply center a bunch of topsoil, bring in, you know, 60 yards of topsoil and dump it and spread it around because it's not going to hold back the water. Clay is ideal. As much as people kind of grown to hate clay because the water does lay on the yard when it's clay and it really doesn't take in the water, I love clay in so many applications. I really do. And I tell people that have a home and a yard that's clay, that as long as the grade is correct around the house, the water is going to run away from the house like there's a rubber liner around that home. Clay is great. We lift grades around homes with clay. Love working with it. If you use it right and to your advantage, it's the perfect material. Look at this. Beautiful work. Now, we did bring in some topsoil pretty late in the day, and we went ahead and we took topsoil on the ditch bank and on that clay in between the two homes, and we put down a bunch of grass seed and some shredded straw. And you always want to put straw down over the seed. That way it'll take, it'll keep it damp, it won't dry out in the sun once it germinates because that's a big problem. If you found any of this information helpful, give us a thumbs up. It supports the channel. If you have any questions about this install, leave them in the comments section. I'm your host, Robert Sherwood, and until that next video.